The first thing you notice about the Osmo is its nifty form factor. It sits pretty easy in your hand and feels like an expensive toy. As a newbie, it's fairly intuitive and an interactive guide takes you through the basics. The neat thing about shooting with the Osmo is you can do pretty complex tracking shots, dolly shots, jib shots, and even dolly jib combo shots. But sometimes you still just need a drone. One of the cooler features is the orientation lock, which keeps the camera pointing in one direction. Useful for smooth shots where you're covering rough terrain. You can get really close to your subject under conditions where bigger cameras might struggle. Also, your phone connects over Wi-Fi, so even in awkward positions, you can see what you're shooting. The Osmo is designed so you can run with it. Even at speed and a whole lot of shake, it stays ultra smooth. The one thing you're not going to get with the Osmo is nice depth of field. The sensor is small, the lens very wide, and with a minimum focal distance of about a meter, you're not going to do macro shots. At 4K, the image resolves beautifully, and you can squeeze out a little more dynamic range with the D-Log color mode. And then there's the slow-mo. At 120fps, it records 1080p, and although the compression is often quite noticeable, it'll be great for YouTube. Likely the most useless feature of the Osmo is the one we've been using all along, the selfie mode. If you're a YouTuber, an annoying tourist, or just reviewing the Osmo, this function is definitely for you but not for me. Once you get the hang of it, the Osmo does feel like you're wielding some kind of magic movie-making wand, and it'll probably become indispensable for events and documentaries. But will you want one for your indie film? The image quality is not quite going to match up to that of a 5D3 or Black Magic, but the rigless camera moves will more than likely make up for it.